After a long consultation, Ofcall has finally announced what the changes to the 2022 exams are going to be. And they are exactly what I predicted they are going to be. Um, if you don't believe me, again, watch a video put out predicting what the, the changes would be a few months ago. And as I predicted then, what Ofcall have said is so vague, it is essentially useless. So there are four main changes that are happening to GCSE and A-level exams in 2022. I'm going to go over the ones that apply to both GCSE and A-level first, and then I'll finish with the ones that just apply to GCSE. So for GCSE and A-level art and design, the assessment is just going to be based on your portfolio. Um, for GCSE and A-level sciences, that is all sciences, biology, chemistry, maths, combined science, geology, astronomy, is there another one? I don't, can't remember. Um, for all sciences, you no, no longer have a requirement to actually do the required practicals yourself. You can either watch your teacher, demo it, or you can go and watch a video. I wonder who we know does lots of videos on practicals. Or watching a video will fulfill that requirement having done the required practicals. So you don't need to actually do the practicals, GCC and A level, every single different type of science that applies to. Now the big one, for both GCSE and A level, you'll be given, will be given, on the 7th of February they've said, advanced information about the contents of the exams. Now that is kind of all they've said at the moment, but it was 7th of February so that, you know, um, if there's a unit that you haven't covered yet, then you don't have to cover it. But it is kind of so late because, you know, most places will have stopped teaching by April. So if you break, it gives you March and April. Um, if your teachers have not covered the unit, one of the units that's going to be in the exams, they then have to try and fit it in. But, you know, if they, right, so if they teach in order and there are 10 units and in February we get told that units one and two that you've already covered aren't going to be in the exam, but units nine and 10 that you haven't covered yet are going to be in the exam, that's not actually saving your teachers a lot of time. It reduces the amount of content that you have to revise. But part of the point of this was to make up for the time that was missed in teaching so that teachers would have to teach you less because they had less time actually face to face with you and because they've made the announcement so late it's kind of not very useful now exam papers take about 18 months to write so they already have the exam papers for next year if not like printed and finalized they've got the contents sorted um so why they're leaving it so late, I really don't know. And they haven't given us any guidance about how detailed this final knowledge is actually going to be. So for example, for maths and definitely at A level, the majority of the content is tested over the course of the two or the three at A level papers. There's generally not a section that won't be covered. So I don't see how giving us advanced knowledge of the content when the content is generally always all of it examined is really going to help us. For stuff like science, generally at GCSE, A level, it's all examined. Generally at GCSE, only about 75% of the content actually makes it onto the exam papers. But until we know how specific that is going to be, is not actually very useful. So is it going to be something like question one is based on cells? Question two for the physics exam is going to be based on forces. Well, forces is a massive topic. You still have to revise the whole of that forces topic because question T is going to be based on it. Or is it going to be something like, you know, question one A is going to be based on, you know, the function of the organelles within an animal cell. That is actually detailed information that will help you revise. But I don't think that's what they're going to do because giving you that level of information tells you that you don't have to revise plant cells, which will then lead through to massive problems when we get to A level when nobody did any work on plant cells at GCSE. So I think they are going to be very, very vague in the information that they give 
else when they give out this advanced information on the exams because they don't want you to not revise stuff that they know is going to be part of the A-level content if you go on and do that. Um, which I know kind of makes it useless. But the problem is there's a difference between the people that make this decision and then the people that actually have to put this decision in place. So the government are the ones that have decided to reduce the amount of content, to give you advanced information, and then the exam boards and schools are the ones that actually have to put this in place. And there's a difference of opinion there. And because the advice from Ofqual is basically so vague and wishy-washy, the exam boards can interpret this in a lot of different ways. So those are the bits of information that are just going to be for GCSE and A-level. Obviously, as soon as I get my hands on the advanced information, I will come and tell you, and then I'll look at whether I need to do predicted papers for next year, because honestly, if they're telling you what's on the exam, I probably don't need to predict what's on the exam. But if the information is so vague, like forces, then I'll write a paper that has lots of forces questions in it and stuff like that. Now for GCSE and uh, GCSE in maths and GCSE physics and the combined science part of GCSE physics, you're going to be given equation sheets to use in the exams, which is nice. I mean, not hugely useful, but nice. Um, because it means there's a little bit of stuff that you don't have to remember. Um, the kind of impression that I'm getting from the exam board's Twitter accounts, so this isn't like any proper information, is that they're not releasing, um, so the exam board's are going to have to give you an equation sheet, a modified equation sheet, with more equations on than they would normally give you. But they've said things like, we're looking at how it's going to affect mark schemes, because quite often on physics exams, for example, you get a mark for writing down the equation. With them now giving you the equation, are they still going to give you the mark in the exam for writing down the equation? There's lots of um, behind the scenes thinking going on at the exam boards as to how to actually interpret what they've been told to do. Um, and then is it going to be all equations? Is it going to be the rearrangement of equations? Are they going to include units or not? We just don't know this information yet. Here is my equation sheet. You can buy these off my website, you can download these for free off my website, or if you're a school, or if you ask a teacher to do this, I will send schools these for free to help you revise. I've got them from maths and got them physics. I can pretty much guarantee the ones from the exam boards will not look as pretty as this. And the ones from the exam boards, I'm like 99.9% .9 sure, will not have units on, might have units on, so they're good. So, it's kind of like a nice thing, but a meh thing. And then for English literature, for history and for geography, they are reducing the amount of content that you have to learn. So for history, they're probably going to like knock off one of the topics and say when you get to the exam, you only have to answer three out of the four questions. Um, same for English literature and for geography. Now, this is only useful if you are, are in a school that hasn't yet taught one of the bits that you get, get examined on, if that makes sense. For example, for English literature, you might get told that you don't have to answer this, like a question on one of the, the novels that you have to do, but if your school has front-loaded all of that, then that, that's actually really, really unuseful, um, because they've taught you a load of stuff that you're not going to be examined on, because they haven't been told about it, it was not your school's fault. And then the government have come around and said, oh yeah, we're not going to examine you on that. Massive waste of everyone's time there, but you are going to be examined on this. So it's not hugely, I mean, it's nice. It'll be nice in the exam. It'll be nice when we get the actual information. Um, but as predicted, this off-call news release was so vague and without any actual details in it, it wasn't actually incredibly useful. And because it was exactly the same as what they announced they were going to do for last year's exams, it's not a massive surprise to anybody, which is how I could predict it, because it's exactly the same as what they did for last year's exams. Um, so, we are in a certain situation where there is now going to be a massive amount of difference in the content you have to learn for GCSE Maths, all of it, so you might have learned content you have to learn for GCSE history, or three quarters of the content, um, which 
is really going to disadvantage students who are taking subjects where you have to learn all the content. So if you're not taking English literature, history or geography, um, you don't, you still have to learn all the content for all of your exams. However, people that are taking English literature, history and geography as three of their options, there's a whole chunk of revising that they just don't need to do anymore. Um, so I don't think that the government has actually thought this through in the way of making it fair to fair and equal to everybody because some of the stuff they've announced is just like you know pointless like the equation sheets yeah it's nice but for maths I mean it, it it's nice but not actually very helpful um and then some of the things just make things really really unfair and until we see how detailed the advanced information is in February there's not a lot of the schools or you can actually do to act on that in determining where to focus your revision um so I would say for revision at the moment guys same as I always say little and often use all the resources you can find um and uh yeah good luck guys